God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our unfaithfulness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the earth tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Psalm 103, verses 8 through 14. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the accept acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way. Through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, 
kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and you see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Holy Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound the trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your light hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they've received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. She comes back to tell me that she's gone, as if I didn't know that, as if I didn't know my own bed. So sings a mournful Paul Simon in Graceland. He sings of a man lost and lonely, struggling to make sense of life and his sorrow from the wreckage of broken relationships. He sings that it is not necessary when you are in pain for somebody to point out the obvious. I feel somewhat the same as Lent begins again. In some ways, it feels like we have been in an extended season of Lent for the whole past year. We've been steeped in grief, lament, isolation, and division. We faced our mortality and our complicity over and over again. We live in a world of broken relationships. We live with the daily news of devastated lives. Our world seems more shattered and broken than we would like to admit. We are no longer able to hide, and we have daily death as our companion. Against this backdrop, in our service this Ash Wednesday, we hear the chilling words spoken as ashes are traced on our forehead. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Do we need this reminder of the fragility of life? Do we really need to bear this truth marked upon us? 
Have we not been overwhelmed with images making the denial and loss of death nearly impossible? Are there no other words we could hear on this occasion? And that is what comes to my mind this year as we enter the season of repentance and renewal called Lent. How can I forget that I am dust even more than ever? Yet I need to speak and to hear these words now more than ever and see that mark they leave behind in their tracing. This is a reminder of what is, and more, it is a promise of what will be. This is God's truth for us, God's promised future in our midst, even in this bleakest of days. For the Holy One says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, Paul says, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. This, too, is the mark that we bear into the season of Lent. All that is true and known, all that is alive and life itself, and all in ourselves, all is held in Christ. There is, I think, a longing in our communal heart to have something to bring to the Holy One when we are empty and spent and lost, but we have nothing to offer up but our own neediness. And into that neediness that we hear the call of Lent, the call to return to God. We hear that call from the one who entered into our human longings and limitations, who lived them all the way to the cross and beyond, to the resurrection, to new life. We hear that as one's called into the cross, a cross that is the deep sign of mortality, not only marked on our forehead, but etched into our hearts. And we hear it as one's baptized through the cross into a new life. We will leave this service wearing before us the mark of our own emptiness. And yet this same mark is our hope. Because this is Lent, the time when face to face with our own emptiness, we lean our whole selves on the one who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and repents about inflicting harm. We lean our whole selves into the promise of this, the cross marked on our foreheads in baptism, that this is the good news of new life through Jesus Christ. For you see, it's all happened already. God has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so is God's mercy upon us. As far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our sins from us. As fathers and mothers care for beloved children, so does God care for us. For God, the Creator, knows whereof we are made and remembers that we are dust. And still, God continues to invite us into our humanity with grace, calling us God's own beloved. And most importantly, has given us an opportunity to seek God's presence and God's peace and remember our place in the community of creation. Our rootedness in the love of God is what helps us to stand resilient living in the love that will not let us go. So we come here to be marked in ashen crosses, but the imposition of ashes is not merely an individual act, a standalone ritual. The imposition of ashes is part of a larger liturgy calling us to personal confession and entry into the disciplines of Lent. We are called into the whole story that Jesus Christ, giving life to the world, is the reason for these forehead ashes. Reminded that we are dust and to dust we shall return is not God's final word for us. Dear people of God, 
the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness, restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the passage of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now come before the Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are but dust, and to dust you shall return.
Let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. Most, Most holy, holy and, and merciful Father, Father we, confess we confess to you, you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints, saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on yes. us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you, Lord. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves, we confess to you, Lord. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess, we confess to, to you, Lord. Lord. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us, we confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indif indifference to injustice and cruelty. Well, accept, accept our, our repentance, repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us, accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, Accept our, our repentance, Lord. Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and break our hearts open so we can receive your grace. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that, that we, we may, may show forth, forth your, your glory in, in the world. world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, Bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Mighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their brokenness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, impenitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be lived in the true fullness of your abundant life, which is your eternal joy now and forever, through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, 
we may not forget you, but remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Amen. This is love, not that we loved God, but that, that he, he loved, loved us and, and sent, sent his, his son. son. He is the sacrifice for our sins that, that we, we might, might live through him. him. If God loves us so much, we ought, we ought to, love to love one, one another. another. If we love one another, God, God lives, lives in us. us. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.